Hi! Welcome back to part three of our Search for Comet Neowise uh, video. Right. Essay. We decided that since uh, Neowise would not be back around for 6,800 years, yeah. we would head out to Joshua Tree National Park um, so that we could see it as clearly as possible, especially here in California. Uh, that's one of the dark sky spots. We took a drive and made a little road trip out of it. Socially distanced. Yeah. Um, it is the time of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, we didn't talk to anyone. We didn't do anything, but we, we just packed drove. our lunch mm -hmm. and a couple snacks for the ride yeah. and just kind of hit the road. So join us. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> So as you approach Palm Springs, you see what is now iconic wind turbines. That contains about 4,000 separate windmills, and all of those windmills combined provide enough electricity to power Palm Springs and the entire Coachella Valley. When they were first put in, they were all considered an eyesore, and now have become really integral to the landscape of Palm Springs. Now we are entering Cabazon, which is made famous for the dinosaurs. Those dinosaurs were built by Claude Bell. He was an amusement park statue designer. You really can't pass through Cabazon without stopping. The dinosaurs are also made extremely famous by being in Pee Wee's Great right. Adventure. But a lot of people think that those dinosaurs were made for the movie, but right. they weren't. Right. So Claude Bell built the dinosaurs and he had the diner right next door right. Um, that was up and operating and then they just decided to use that as part of the movie. God, my skin's on fire. The really cool thing about the Cabazon um, area where the dinosaurs live is that there are two really large dinosaurs. Dinny? So the red one, uh, which is called Dinny, is an Apatosaurus, mm -hmm. and it is 150 feet long. Pretty took, incredible. Yeah, it took 11 years to build Dinny, um, and he is the largest dinosaur in the United States. And across from Dinny is Mr. Rex, which is the big green T-Rex, mm -hmm. um, who was actually never fully completed, but he does have a slide down his tail. So now we're coming to Palm Springs. Palm Springs, interestingly, well, actually, not surprisingly, first people who lived in Palm Springs were the Agua Caliente Band of Cahuilla Indians. Um, and this group of Indians actually died out due to a smallpox outbreak after Palm Springs was visited by Juan Batista de Anza. 
uh, who was coming to Palm Springs to map out the hot springs around the area. And then an aqueduct was built in 1884, which brought water into the area. And then more people came uh, after the first hotel was built in 1886. And that hotel is still up today, and that's the Palm Springs Hotel. It's, it's a very s strange place from someone who's used to having snow. Yeah. Um, but it's super hot, and the houses are built to accommodate the heat. And, um, great architecture, really interesting place to visit. So now we are in Joshua Tree, which was designated as a national monument in 1936 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and it was accorded national park status in 1994. It is a habitat for 813 higher plant species. Yeah, 46 reptile species, 57 mammal species, and over 250 bird species. It has one paleontological area, and it protects 700 archaeological sites. Some of the inhabitants of the park include lizards, the desert iguana, the zebra tail lizard, as well as the prickly pear cactus, which is one of the uh, flora of the area, as well as the greater roadrunner and the gambles quail, which we actually saw crossing, crossing the street as we were driving, which is so yeah, crazy. With the tiny babies. With tiny babies. Really, really cute. Really cute. Success. Also, when we got to the park today, there was a big advisory for aggressive bees yes. in the area. And several campgrounds were closed because of it. Yeah, so the aggressive bees are like super thirsty, and so they come, and if you're sweating a lot, it's right. really dangerous because you could really attract all of these the bees. aggressive bees. gotten to the part where we look for the Comet Neowise. Uh, when we were actually out in Joshua Tree, it got super dark and there was no way for my camera to focus <laughs> on the Comet right. or the stars at all like we have been able to for the past two installments. So we're just going to talk to you about it and then show some pictures of the right. comment and of the Milky Way that I got on my camera with some long exposure shots, but no video because no. it was way so too dark. dark. Um, there were a few people there, and those people had flashlights a lot uh, yeah. as they were walking around, so that ruined everything there. Lovely to see them, but it ruined any kind of um, shots we could get video. for that. <laughs> but anyway, it was really cool. It was um, It's amazing, whether you know this or not, the, the temperature drops quite rapidly in the desert. So um, whereas it was 114 a couple hours earlier, it had started to drop by then. So it was quite comfortable. Which made it perfect for some excellent stargazing. That's right. Okay, so what is a comet? It is frozen leftovers from the formation of the solar system. Composed of dust, rock, and ices. Now this specific comet, Comet Neowise, was discovered by the Neowise mission. Neowise stands for Near Earth Object Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it's named like that because it's named after the telescope that discovered. 
discovered it. And it won't be seen for another 6,800 years, so uh, we're all pretty lucky that we got to see this for the short time that it was visible for us. And then also during our trip, we got the chance to see Saturn and Jupiter right kind of across from Common Neowise, which was pretty awesome. And looking through our telescope, we could see, I think, three or four of Jupiter's moons. That's Just right. like we were able to see them when we were at the Griffith Observatory uh, last installment. Right. And we saw Saturn's rings. That's I right. Totally forgot through about the that. telescope. We could see Saturn's yeah. rings through the telescope because it was so dark out. Yeah. So we could really see the rings uh, this time. Incredible. Which was crazy. I mean, uh, we are so starstruck, as it were, <laughs> because our telescope is not so powerful and so big, but it really does it the job. Awesome. Well, we had quite a day. We traveled for 12 hours. The temperature ranged from 84. Yeah. We got up to 114, and now that we're back home, it's 64 degrees. It's crazy. But we had a great time. Like we said in the beginning, we packed everything so we didn't have to really stop right. at any restaurants um, or anything like that along the way, which was amazing. I don't think we actually talked to another person throughout the entire No, which trip. is so sad and not the way we are in life ever. Yeah. But, um, but it was nice for our pandemic uh, preparedness travel, travel it, was, yeah. it really did work out. Yeah, so I mean, I hope that this inspires you to look up at the stars more and just find things, enjoy nature. Um, I'm sure whatever other little adventures we have, we're happy to share them with you and hope that um, we can get your feedback and find out what your experiences were watching the comet. Yeah, but, or any of your stargazing um, experiences mm. now mm -hmm. that we have, you know, the whole night sky to look at. That's right. So, see you next time. Bye!